Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account. Um, we want to take a couple minutes, talk about Matria, talk about what we kind of have coming up, answering any questions that we um, have going on here. What's going on, Apollinaire? And it looks like Iz Izan is here as well. It says hello and good luck. Um, so overall, first, we did get one copy of Matria. We have actually built her out um, up to this level. So we got one legendary copy. Now, I've been closely monitoring uh, the test server, which we know is a couple days actually ahead of the live servers. So Tuesday, we're going to start getting the Nightmare Corridor is going to be up, which is an entirely new game mode that is coming to the Guild Grounds. Um, again, M Matria is having a really strong showing within there. We are also seeing Matria in a couple different avenues, which this is what we are waiting for, guys. When we've talked before about waiting to build out the heroes within AFK Arena, this is really the reason. So within the Cursed Realm and the leaderboards, Matria is making um, in some of the formations in here. We've actually seen her. There we go. 4.91 billion damage within here. We have started to see her within the Cursed Realm formations. We've seen her in the Twisted Realm formations. It seems like she is going to be a really big asset to have in there. Now, in addition, when it comes to the Treasure Scramble, looking at the leaderboard, even just looking at Barry, right here in, what, the fifth team, uh, team number five right here, you can see we have her in here as well. So she is making not only the instance when it comes to the Curse Realm, but we are going to see her in the new game mode in the Nightmare Corridor. And we also see her in PvP formations. So she is also being utilized a lot within the Infernal Fortress. It is not just so much the the um, the Lucretia carry anymore in the Infernal Fortress, but we're starting to see a lot more of Matria in there as well. So this is what, again, I've talked about. Wait to build the heroes, guys. If we would have waited, if we would have paused, we wouldn't have an instance where we have a fully built out the Awakened version of Aziz. That is not utilized anywhere, guys. It's kind of sad to see. Um, yes, she is useful. That's one of the big things, Petty. That is why I wanted to look at it, and that's why we're going to build her. Now, a lot of players are also wondering, because I don't have the Awakened version of Baden either. We actually have the one single copy. The reason why I'm not building him right now is because I have the ability to merc him uh, from the Greyborn account so I can actually borrow him out of here um, every single time that I need him. I know he's guaranteed because he is coming from my own account, which means within, again, the Nightmare Corridor and also utilization within the Cursed Realm, I have him covered here. Now, I'm not going to have him within the Treasure Scramble, so a little bit of a variation out of there, but overall, because I can get him and he's fully built... Um, I'm not really going to worry that much about, about pulling him out of there. What's going on? Moneymaker's here. Alex Slim is here. Been waiting since this morning. Yeah. Apollinaire, that's what we've noticed is it seems like she is very broken in a lot of different game modes, um, which is the reason why I do want to build her. What's going on? Enjoyer Peter is here as well. Hop in as well. Uh, forget the times when we adjust the summon time during the night. Yeah. So Scripter, we do the Daylight Savings Time. I don't understand the, the reason why we're doing it, um, but we still do. So unfortunately, it's been pretty uh, pretty crazy. I've been really enjoying the short uh, videos on the hero builds. Do you have any plans to do shorts or just normal videos on hero artifacts? I could beacon. Um, I, I would have to put probably a lot together. Um, short videos, as we know, for the heroes, it seems to work pretty well for... Artifacts, I think I'll cover artifacts, probably just normal videos because of the timing. The absolute incredible amount of time that it would take me to cover all of the heroes doing artifacts would be um, would be kind of in crazy, crazy busy in there. Um, I don't see her anywhere between the Cursed Realm, Best and Slot. Um, Terra Toxin, she is actually used in a lot of the PvP formations. The Treasure Scramble, um, we're starting to see her in a lot of different formations. And that's the other reason right there she is within the PvP formations, um, which that is in Team 5, but there is Team 5. Um, but of course, it doesn't display the right team. But we're seeing her in the PvP. Um, we're also seeing her utilized as the best in slot within the Nightmare Realm or the Nightmare Corridor that's coming out. We're going to see that as well. Um, Terra Toxin. She is coming there as well. Um, also regret building Awakened Taylene. Guys, Awakened Taylene still does incredibly well when it comes to the tower, still used in a bunch of different formations. Um, in just a little bit, I'm gonna cover the new guide for the Cursed Realm that just came out, that um, Tartaros put out. But Taylene still does have a place, guys. 
She is one of the big priority heroes when it comes to building her out within the tower, which works. Not sure if you remember me asking, but should I go with Vithiel or Halos? I went for both and couldn't be happier. Um, honestly, Halos is being used in a lot of content and so is Vithiel. Both of those heroes, guys, right here is uh, Vithiel, right here is Halos. Both of them are being used in the best in slot teams pretty much across multiple game modes, including the Treasure Scramble, the Curse Realm. Both of them are being used. Should you build, build one or the other, um, you're going to build them both. Uh, eventually, you're still going to be building them both just because, again, they are such a strong build. What's going on, Devin? Which would be a third choice after Brutus and Solus? Honestly, utility-wise, I like the Awakened version of Belinda. Um, again, all of the Awakened heroes are being used in a lot of different places. We're seeing the utility of the Awakened heroes, which is pretty much by design, and that's why they are a lot more difficult to build. Um, when you look, though, Awakened Taylene, definitely a little bit more of a backseat. Um, Awakened Disease, the exact same. Awakened version of Thane, um, kind of the exact same. It seems like Curse Realm, Treasure Scramble are really the, the two big areas um, in which heroes fundamentally cross over between both of them is really, Tushar, is really the big thing is where are you going to have the most utility out of the heroes that you build? Belinda used in both game modes, Brutus in both game modes, Solus in both game modes, um, even looking here at the Awakened version of Baden and also Matria used in both game modes. So, so again, the utility aspects of there, you really want to make sure. What's going on, Andre? Ngazi is here as well. Caught the stream, Oak Bow. Yeah, um, how am I doing? Great. Just got done shopping, took my daughter to volleyball this morning like we do every Sunday. Um, very, very cool. Alejandro, welcome. Um, I love my Awakened Taylene, no regrets building her. Yeah, that, that's really the thing, Beacon, is the, the heroes like the Awakened version of Taylene have a place within the game. Um, is the new hero worth building? Yes. Absolutely, guys, the new hero is worth building. Again, looking at the damage that she's producing across multiple game modes, that is the reason why we're going to go ahead and we are going to summon for her today. I've been making a lot of progression. Um, we might pick up uh, a couple more packs out of here to continue building out the heroes, um, which I'll show you guys in just a couple. But you can see we are in dire straits. We, we need a lot more elemental cores. Um, shards, we're getting quite a bit. Red chests, we're burning through pretty much as soon as we get them. All right, guys, elite stones, hopefully celestials or hypogens. This is what we're seeing or what we're wanting to see. And there we go, guys. No celestials or hypogens, just some more food. Uh, just a tip, you've already... Yeah, I, I've seen that out for us. I haven't looked at it. If it is the same rewards, I'll test it out next week um, just to make sure. But if it's the same rewards, yeah, th there's not going to be any reason to do additional... Um, additional comps in there i i seen some of the comments didn't have a chance to reply but we will get there the artifact says hot yeah the artifacts do kind of most of them it's dependent on game mode so even when we look at taylene when you look at an artifact itself it shows you which artifacts are usually equipped and again those are very dependent on the game modes so kind of less of a precedent when it comes to the artifacts what's going on inner um i saw a translation patch the hero reset from april 1st yeah, so the hero reset, I think it's going to be, I'm not sure if it's going to be an entire hero reset like we have seen in the past. Um, I believe that is what it's going to be, guys. They did the patch notes. I think I've seen a little snip of that over on Reddit about a hero reset. So if we can reset a hero, and I'm hoping that they extend that reset up to the Awakened Heroes, because if I could reset a hero like Ainz, um, I would do it absolutely in a moment. If it is just an engraving reset, I will reset my right here, Thorin King. Um, I will actually um, reset Thorin with that reset. We're going to have to see exactly how it is and what exactly that entails. Because a lot of times when they do the resets, just like with the engraving resets, um, they usually have some stipulations in there to what you can and what you can't do. Um, th that's kind of the problem. I have a lot of built heroes that don't participate in Curse Realm, is it really worth it? Not really, Petta King. And that's where a lot of the campaign formations have remained the same, um, while a lot of them have changed differently. Now I know the, the blue and yellow tickets, guys, these are surprise hero coupons. These are surprise choice. These are surprise coupons. These were given to players probably, 
God, probably two and a half, maybe three years ago um, for making purchases in AFK Arena. And they were giving you giving you an incentive to buy more packs. I don't know if I have any down here right now, but when you purchase a pack, you can use these additional coupons right here that give you bonus loot when you buy additional purchases. Again, it, it was kind of an incentive that AFK Arena did to incentivize players to spend more money once upon a time. As you can see, guys, I've never burned through them. I've never utilized them um, just because I don't buy packs that often. And then most of the packs that we do purchase um, do not have that aspect of picking up the bonuses. So when we look at our monthly and our deluxe, and when we look at the cards right here, um, this doesn't give us, and I don't even know if we have enough in here to purchase this. We do. When we buy this, it doesn't give us an option to use those cards. It is straight to the, the bonus packs that you get. We gotta do one more purchase. So I buy this one out, guys. Just like that, we got some VIP. And then deluxe, we go in here for the cores. Another $19.99, that brings us to $110 that we spent this month, guys, and that is it. That is where we're capped, and it is even a little bit less than $110, because remember, with a couple of these packs, and there we go, we earned 400 play points, so we'll get a return right there. We get a return for using our cards and buying the packs, but in addition, you can see this is 31 days, this is 35 days, so these do supersede over a month. So again, if I broke it down over an entire year, it's not 12 months of buying this pack, it's more like 11 months of buying this pack again. Regal Rewards I do not buy because I do not need the heroes any longer. So we just kind of get what we get. Monthly cards I buy, Noble Society I buy, and that's it. That's it. Like I said, roughly keeping it about $100, which is what we've looked at before. Love your YouTube. I usually don't comment because I listen to them a lot of driving to work. <laughs> oh, thanks, Evan. Yeah, I try to get to a lot of the comments that we have on there, guys. I, I really do try to get to them, um, but it's been a little busy and crazy. So if I didn't answer some of the questions, I know also a lot of other viewers answer a ton of questions in there. And a big shout out for that. It, it is very, very cool to see. Uh, it would be cruel if the reset was an April Fool's joke. Oh, uh, that beacon, that would, you'd have a lot of people quit. That, that would be kind of crazy. Um, what do you rec recommend building Awakened Heroes to one star and building them all, of course, with the E? Yeah, so the way that I approach the Awakened Heroes, um, definitely, Daniel, one star and one star only. There is absolutely no reason, unless you're being very competitive with an AFK arena, um, that you would build them out past one star. This is where you want them, guys, the Awakened Heroes, the 30960, so actually doing the 60 engraving, plus 30 signature item in the nine of nine furniture is really it. When you get in there, um, when you start getting to a point of looking into min-maxing or even getting into much more, I guess of the competition wise when it comes to the cursed realm, you'll see heroes like this where they have a 30960, but Belinda I actually took to a 67 because I want the damage that she does. Um, and even like in the case of Brutus, I took Brutus to a 35 signature item just because I wanted the extra haste that is on here. You can build them up a little bit bigger, putting some more stars on there. But again, I do not recommend at all um, putting stars on there just because of the sheer cost. If you're not sitting on every Celestials and Hypogen hero that you have here fully built out, there's no reason to spend either your Stargazer cards or your diamonds getting them past the star just really doesn't make a, a big, big sense. Uh, what's up, Pipple? Finally got Awakened Baden E60. Yes, Baden has a ton of utility. Absolutely. That's what I would like to do. Um, Patty, um, if I could reset my Awakened Disease and use Baden, I would love it more than anything. That would be crazy to see. They said you can reset everyone, but Dims is Awakened to Awaken uh, Celestial. Oh, Celestials and Hypogens. That would be awesome. That's what we're looking for, guys. What's going on, Shady? People say that what more good things too much, but one thing is never too much money. Yeah, there is too much money just if it corrupts. If you can keep your money in check with your morals, um, Peter, I, I think that's really where a lot of people um, kind of stress with. And on my other channel, I do the financial literacy, education, things of that nature, as well as the news. Um, that's where I think people need to keep it in check. Basically, this game is not available in India, so you can buy, oh, it sucks, it's free to play. Yeah, I, I've heard that from a lot. I know Javid has the exact same thing, guys. Um, he cannot make in-game purchases because of where he's at. He's still allowed to play. 
but some of them, I know a lot of players do have to VPN to different places. Um, but then again, if you VPN, most of the time you cannot make the purchases. All right, guys, so Matria, let's go ahead. We'll do our regular summons. In Stargazers, we have 280 of our scrolls right now. Um, we have 45,000 diamonds. I am going to wait to see who we're going to build in here. Um, of course, if we get Matria built up, we'll build her out. But I am going to wait to see exactly who is coming. I don't think it's a new Celestial that's coming. Um, with the two silver haired girls, we don't know if it's gonna be a crossover with like a dimensional um, or how it's gonna really shake out. So I am holding tight on this right now and I would recommend it as well, um, just because we don't know what's coming with this fourth anniversary. Now we know that uh, Matria is already being tested and already has a lot of utility. So let's go ahead, guys. We'll do our regular summons in here. Still building out Edwin. He is actually used as some of the subs within this round of the Cursed Realm. So if you do have him built out, we are seeing him subbed in a couple Cursed Realms. And if you've noticed, he has a lot of utility. We're seeing him used within the Graveborn Tower as well when we continue to build it out. Um, also, Tamaris, we're building out. We have a lot of heroes that we're focusing on. And a lot of those heroes are furniture, guys. There's a copy of Brutus, which again, just going to be food, but two elites, guys, and it is Lucius. Not the best, but it's still food, guys. We will definitely use the heroes as we continue to build them as food. This week, I got my first Awaken from the Yellow Shalit Stones. Of course, it was a copy of the Awakened Hero. I just finished building. Yeah, that's what happened to us, Andre. We got the same. What's going on, Muker? Uh, got Awakened Talene, Max Disease, a Legendary Brutus. They gave the Awakened Swap Scroll. Uh, if I do Aziz... Nothing or we can tell you to get solace. Um, that's tough. I mean, if you have got Awakened Taylene to max, Aziz to legendary plus, I mean, it might be the point to doing the Awakened version of Taylene to another hero, but the thing is, you're still going to use her a lot for the tower. That, that's kind of the, the big thing. Aziz, again, if he's only legendary plus, no reason to. Um, I want to see if they give us a scroll. And Dominic, this is going to make the big difference, guys is if they give us a scroll to use or if they just give us a timer, which I'm assuming, look at that guys, there is Matria. Our second one right there, our second pull with the common scrolls. Look at the RNG that we got, the Awakened version. Lilith knows that we wanna build it today and there is a copy just sitting here chatting. Very nice, that is our second copy guys. That is who we're looking for. Um, Awakened Disease and my ex-girlfriend are the two biggest regrets of 2022. Oh, in that order, Clay? That, that is nice. But there we go, guys. There is one copy just out of our common scrolls, just like that, which is awesome to see, followed up by another one, which is Verk. Got a free copy, guys. That saves us roughly 50 to 70 cards, um, which is crazy. Definitely, Devin, have to build her. Um, you know what? I'm going to use my other my other scrolls just for the fun of it because it would be insane if we seen another copy of an Awakened Hero in here. Got an Elite, though, which is Golas, which, again, is just a little bit more food. Back-to-back -back Elites, which is Naru. Even though they're, they're basic, guys, it's food. That is back-to-back -back Elites on single summons, which is pretty cool to see. This one I just use since there's no chance of getting any of our Awakened Heroes in here as of right now. This would be an awesome addition or an awesome update um, if they actually let us use the cards here or actually let us um, have an opportunity to get the Awakened Heroes right there. I would love to see it, but that brings us one closer, guys. That, that is some really, really um, just got her in a friendship. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the reason, Beacon, why I always record this is when unique things happen like that. Um, I love having them on video so we can see. Just discovered the financial channel. Um, loving your content. Yeah, G-Star, that's what I do professionally. A, a lot of you don't know the, the financial is what I do. I am a certified financial counselor, um, do financial counseling budget, um, all of that stuff. It, it is very, very cool. Uh, 179 cards, guys. So we need literally as many copies as we can get out of here. Again, it has been proven that the one summon versus the 10 summon does not make a difference. There is no difference between these two. So go ahead, 10 summon, one summon, whatever you want to. Fundamentally, there is no difference, which is funny because looking at the probability, um, AFK Arena has said 
that there is no difference. And they have said since the beginning there is no difference. And then all of those players did an incredible amount of testing. And of course, we found out there was no real difference when it came to the sheer number of summons. All right, guys, let's see if we can keep this going. I want to see a double, maybe some back-to-back. -back. We need some copies in here. And I also have to pay attention to the diamonds. If you guys caught the free-to-play account, um, I almost completely missed the diamonds. It doesn't show up as anything different in here. But there we go, guys. There is copy number three. A lot more resources in here. But the diamonds, again, it, it didn't show up orange. It doesn't show up a different color. And look at that, guys. There is another copy. Very nice. That is awesome. That is already two plus the one. That is three. We already had one. That takes us to four that we're building out of here, guys. I would love to see one or two more copies would be phenomenal out of the cards we have here. I'd love to see a double or a triple, guys. Would just be absolutely crazy. But some of these, when they pop up, I don't even really look at the chest because the red chest... Like this just says 30,000 when you get the diamonds. Um, you don't really even notice it very much. And there we go, guys, there is one more. So the reason why I chose Matria over Baden was the ability to um, the ability to mark Baden for the game modes. I don't have any account currently that I have the ability to mark the um, built up Matria random spawn, which is really the big reason. The Awakened version of Baden, I am guaranteed because I'm getting it from my Graveborn account, which makes it super easy to get the copy um, for both the Nightmare Corridor that is going to be coming up, as well as um, utilization within the Cursed Realm. I can use it even within the tower. I can do the same as I can use the copy that I get out of there. And there we go, guys. There is another copy, which is just a single, but I am okay with it. But that gives us, what, four copies? I think 179 cards, that was four copies. Let's use our last ones here. And unfortunately, we can't use our diamonds in here, so it's going to be the singles. I'm just wondering if we can get one more copy. Would be insane, guys, to get out of here. There's some more, um, some more tier stones. Come on, three more. And the final card, could it be another copy? It is another copy! There is no way, guys. This is the streamer luck that we've been waiting for. <laughs> What's going on, Charmel? Um, yes, absolutely, guys. Our final card of 179. 179 cards, that is five copies. That is five copies, if I remember. Um, that is our final one. That that is the final one for the, the final copy. Um but that gives us six, and I believe that will take her to Mythic with that, which is crazy. Yes, that is some absolute luck with the final card. So what was that, 179? I think 179 cards for five copies, which is good. But I think, again, that brings her up to, which with the rest of these heroes we got here, Go ahead and auto ascend. So we got one, two, three, and we're still gonna have one more copy. Javid! Oh my goodness, Javid is here, guys. What is going on, Javid? Um, yeah, streamer luck, guys. Again, this is why I save the this is why I save to summon, guys. The the luck that I have seen on the live streams. Um, I, I have never seen anywhere else. I, I I haven't seen it, even personally, guys, on all the accounts that I summon on. That is insane to get her up to Mythic on 179 cards. Um, and we did also get one extra copy. So we're only essentially, what, five copies away? Five copies away from getting her built, which is crazy. I hope they include more ways to get time emblems. Yeah, so that's a big thing, Hoppet, is there's going to be a lot more ways. Even with the keys um, that are coming up, your 100 summons with the keys, um, similar to the Magician's Hat, you're going to have the ability to get time cards out of there, um, including the new shop. So when it comes to the Nightmare Corridor, you can get um, emblems out of there. You can get more time emblems out of there, Hop It. There, there's going to be a lot of new ways to get them. Fundamentally, even in the game going forward, even if it's, you know, 10 every couple weeks or whatever it may be, they're, they're adding a lot more ways to get those out, to get the time emblems out of there, which is awesome. It is really what we needed. It is what we asked for. They said that we would have a lot more ways to get them. Um, 
and they're, they're honestly coming through. Are they going to give us hundreds of emblems? No. Are they going to give us ways to get new ones um, or get more of them? Yes, and they have been. They, they, they definitely been. Yeah, yeah, the, the night, new Nightmare Corridor, and it doesn't seem too hard. I've been testing it out, um, Teratoxin, over on the test server, and it, it's not super difficult to go in there to get the bosses, um, but ultimately to, to do those quests that they have in there and get the cards is what you want. You, you really want to get those cards out of there. Makes a really big difference, guys. Now, Olgath, we are not building, but look at that, guys. We have her at Mythic already from one copy 179 cards later, we got her built up and built up significantly, which is awesome. Uh, I think Lilith, yeah, that, that's what I think, Shady. I think Lilith is uh, watching our streams and monitoring our rates. Um, if that's the case, they could go ahead and ship a couple copies to my mailbox and I wouldn't be mad um, if they wanted to go make it easier or if they wanted me to utilize the cards, they can go ahead and send me some cards as well. Um, and, and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll take care of that as well all right guys there's the plus 20 then i know we're a little bit short getting this the plus 30 but we are going to get there guys just going to take a little bit what are we at plus 27 so that is awesome we're going to have to build out all of our gear in here get it all built up drop the tier fours on her but of course getting that signature item of course unlocked this part just got to get signature item a little bit higher which is very very cool to see guys let's check out the furniture yeah, yeah, I know, I know, Ghazi, we've seen it in the past, guys. Again, the, the streamer luck um, has been incredible. Even when I don't do this or when I summon outside of doing my streams, the luck is not there. The, the luck is not there anywhere like what we see here, guys. Let's pop open some of these cards and some of these chests. Then we'll do our furniture summons again. Over the last week, I got about 20, I think I've seen around 21, 20,000, 21,000 poke coins. Um, which is what we accumulate in a week. It is very cool, guys, to, to accumulate those. And look at that, Randall, brand new subscriber to the channel, guys. We are at 30,000, I think like 400. So we are even coming up on 31,000 subscribers to the channel, which again is just absolute insane that we have that many subscribers, guys. And it just continues, which is awesome. I have a dream that you did a massive summon on the account saving up things. I've set a challenge in... Oh, very, very nice. If you remember, guys, we just did the summons, and I believe Mickey is on here. Um, we did the summons with Mickey's account. We built just about everybody. They, they, they. Um, we we built just about everybody, um, which is kind of crazy. I don't think we have anyone else to bring in here. But the Nightmare Corridor, I'll get Time Gazer cards and Star Gazer cards for and Zafriel. Yeah, that's it. Hop it is not only are they giving you more access to some of these Celestials and Hypogens, but you're also getting the Time Gazer cards, the Stargazer cards, and you're getting the heroes themselves. So you're going to have the ability to save those Stargazer cards because you're getting the heroes themselves, which again is going to make it a little bit easier um, to, to go ahead and build them up, those out. I had insane rates for but Betrina. <laughs> The, the names in here kill me, guys. That That is so funny, Bert. Um, 360 cards for Ascended, only 20K diamonds. That is amazing. We burned 179. I think it was 179. Wish list. I popped her in the wish list, so I actually dropped out Baden. Um, we put her in there, which is good. We still need... So looking at heroes that really need furniture, guys. Um, Kanisa and Rook. Mulan, absolutely need furniture. Orin, absolutely need furniture. Um, right here with Hendrick, the three of nine furniture. Tamaris needs furniture. Edwin needs furniture. Rain, not really so much. Valoris, damage dealer, yes. And then Salakai, they need furniture, guys. We need a lot of furniture. And look at that. Jesse, a second new subscriber to the stream. Thank you for subbing to the channel. Um, how can I go about having you open the summons on my account for a video? Um, Jesse, that we, we can talk about if you hit me up on Discord or um, on email. Um, one thing to note, guys, is to do the summons on your account, similar to Mickey's account, I have to have access to the account. So if for literally any reason whatsoever, um, I, I don't want to access a lot of people's accounts when they're tied to personal things, um, when they're tied to Facebook, when they're tied to a bunch of different things. I, I A lot of players have their accounts on kind of an individual level. Um, when it's tied to a bunch of other things, 
Again, I, I don't recommend, even to me, I don't recommend giving all the information, username and passwords to literally anyone unless you feel 100% comfortable. And I've had a lot of members or a lot of um, viewers that, that I've turned down and said, you know what, no, it's linked to this, this, and this. I, I don't want to do it. Um, absolutely not. I'm thinking of buying um, just to buy some resources for Dark Taylene calling her Dark Taylene. Um, so Peter, the, the best way to do it is through the VIP. Guys, if you look at the VIP purchases, depending where you're at, Peter, these are probably the best ones if you're looking specifically for the time emblems right here. These are the big ones if you're looking to buy the, the cost of the time emblems. Um, you could go that route or if you wanted to, I know there's a few like Yuri's bundle like right here. Um, a lot of players do utilize this, but here you get 120, but you have an opportunity within the well um, to pull some more loot. So again, it, this is a lot of places where players are buying the time emblems as well, Peter, um, if you're looking to, to buy some of those. The moment where the game trolls you by giving you a double last copy of Linda. Yeah, we had the same. So yeah, we, we did our summons and we got a double copy of when we pulled Belinda with summons. So, so we got a we got a bonus copy out of there. Uh, yeah, so many diamonds. We're saving the diamonds right now because again, um, sheep. We don't know what's coming. I, I'm waiting because I don't know exactly what's coming. Let's see if we can pull some mythic furniture in here, guys. Then we'll check out the pets. I'm um, trying to get to twelve. There is a copy for Mulan again. Mulan's nine to nine furniture is super important, guys. It is actually a hero that you do want to prioritize building with the furniture. There's a piece for Salakai. I believe that takes him to eight. Back-to-back -back furniture, which is Kinesa and Rook. We definitely, again, Kinesa and Rook, similar to Mulan. Um, furniture on both of those heroes is super, super important to build. It really unlocks a, a whole nother. Kinesa and Rook is the energy disintegration, which again is huge when it comes to PvP, when it comes to other game modes. Kinesa and Rook still doing incredibly well. Don't have enough for another summon, but let's see. So Kinesa and Rook's almost there. Salakai's almost there. Just need more pull coins. Just need to get more pull coins out of there, which is kind of crazy. Then we'll go ahead and we will get into the beast, guys. Um, definitely need to summon up some of these beasts. Uh, what was your best summon rate for Awakened Heroes? Mine was the discounted ones. Gave me six copies, two doubles, a single. Tushar, that, that's amazing. That is absolute insane rates. When you look at the summons, if you got six heroes out of those, um, that's incredible. So within the resonance, guys, beast resonance, we talk about this quite a bit, um, making sure you're focusing on building the beast to here because we know the Savage Souffle is coming up, um, is coming up pretty soon. So you wanna make sure whether you're at six, nine, 12, wherever you're at, that you're building out the, the beast to the resonance to essentially get them all here. And I've also noticed the beast resonance is a really big impact when it comes to different game modes. When you're looking at the grand hunt, um, the cursed realm, the twisted realm, everything, the beast levels are huge, guys. They are absolutely, um, absolutely huge to get those. It doesn't work like that. You're saving something anyway. It's just the wrong resource. So we've also, again, the, the rumor is as of right now over on the primary servers, um, that they're going to have a reset, that they're going to have a hero reset, which is going to be huge if we do get it. I don't even know how many I got here, 207. So you'll see, guys, we got our Blade Ridge up to 12, which meant we dropped out Blade Ridge. So now I'm trying to get the Rock Lizard, trying to get all three of these up to 12. And again, focusing on building them. Make sure you save one of these, or if you don't, the new event that is coming up for the uh, Fantastic Beast will allow you to get one of these to get that Savage Souffle and actually build um, her up a little bit. Boom, there's another copy of our Moth. I don't think takes it any higher, but one copy closer to 12, guys. We're getting there. We are getting there. Uh, two minute room. Yes, that's what they were saying, KD, is that the, the reset, a reset of hero is coming, which is going to, again, this is again over on Reddit. Um, the awakened heroes are going to have the awaken the ability to be reset, and again, that that's kind of the details that we're getting. KD is what they're looking at is you're going to be able to reset 
essentially an awakened hero to an awakened hero. So I think that's kind of almost not really like a reset, but I think that's kind of more of a swap scroll is what we're hearing, KD. And I know a couple of players have talked about it. So if I can reset the awakened version of Aziz and reset that bad boy to an awakened version of Baden while keeping my legendary copy of Aziz, guys, that is gonna be game changing, especially because we're building out Matria. Um, that will give us the ability to have all of the awakened heroes across this count, which have been a very, very big focus, buying them out of the deluxe monthly cards. Um, but that will give us access or that will give us availability. We will have all of the awakened heroes with the addition of Baden um, built and including Matria. That will be awesome. Yes. So it is going to be, I guess, and this is um this is the way that that I've heard it, is it's going to be awakened to awaken. It is going to be celestial or hypogen to celestial or hypogen. So if I have, let's say, a Thalia right here and I wanted to build out a different hero, it is going to be a swap between the Celestials and Hypogens or Celestial the Celestial, but these two of the rare heroes and then the regular four factions are going to be the same. It is going to be a swap. Now, the question I had, which I don't have clarification on there, is... Is it going to be a scroll like what we're going to see here with our swap scroll or is it actually going to be the ability to just have um is it going to be a timer which i'm assuming it might be like hey there's a 10 day timer to go ahead and do your swaps after 10 days the swaps are going to expire meaning you're not going to be able to use them anymore or is it just going to be a swap scroll that we're going to have and look at that d2 Thank you for being a member for 11 months. He is a supporter going on a year and you can see his little silver hippo right there. Just like a lot of you guys got the hippos. Thank you for the love and support for the channel. I know D2 does, does a lot. Uh, I've talked to him a couple times, figuring out formations and everything. And I have the new one, um, D2, for the current hero, which I'm going to cover just in a little bit. So within the Cursed Realm, Tarnos over on Cursed Friends puts out a new Cursed Realm guide so we can help you score a little bit better on there. Um, I'm going to cover the guide in the video tonight. I'll also send it over to you so you have access to it if you don't have the Discord server. I reset this because I didn't have Matria. Um, so I have five attempts left. I'm going to try it. And again, Baden, the Awakened version of Baden and Matria are two really big heroes that we're seeing in a bunch of different game modes. And I'm wondering if here, if we can sub in or swap some of this food so we got Lucius in here, and this is what I've talked about, guys. A lot of players wonder when I say that we are just literally um, consuming our own food. So we're recycling food through here, which is what I've been doing, again, for an incredible amount of time because a majority of my heroes are already completely maxed out, meaning they're already at five stars. So we have the ability, when you have 60 ascended heroes, not including the dimensional heroes, but when you do have 60 Awakened Heroes, this rickety cart, which most people never use the rickety cart, you can actually retire heroes out of here. I save two Legendary Plus heroes. The rest of these, I just recycle, guys. And they give me hero coins, but they also give me essence. Hero coins, of course, allows me to buy out these stones, but it also allows me to power level the tree. These could be Celestials and Hypogens, which is, again, the reason why I buy all of these out. And then we'll have enough to buy and build out our tree a little bit further with those stones. But here, three gives us, again, just some more heroes to recycle. And this one gives us a copy of Astrilda. So unfortunately, nothing in there, guys. I was thinking maybe, just maybe, it could be another copy of Matria, but that is not the case in that one. Swapping Wukong. Oh, yeah, that that's true, Shadow. I know a lot of players, when it comes to Wukong, when it comes to... Um, even looking here at Flora, a lot of players do have all of these heroes maxed out, which if you're swapping Celestial to Celestial or Hypogens, um, getting a new hero at five stars being completely built out is literally game changing. For some of the heroes that you never use anymore that you built once upon a time, um, that's honestly going to be game changing if they can go, um, if you can build them, if it's going to be easier. Um, if they do the hero swap, I'll swap Taylene to Brutus or Baden. Yeah, Taylene again, guys, be careful with Taylene because if you look fundamentally going through the tower, guys, Taylene is one of the absolute driving forces when you look at any of these replays. Um, Taylene 
Look at that, 30.13 billion damage. Um, Taylene is really the driving force in when you start getting into two teams in here. If you get rid of Taylene, chances are you might regret it just a little bit later because you're going to be kind of stuck um, with some of the heroes. So I'm going to set this, guys. I'm going to set some of these formations and go through here. Just kind of let it farm out. I look for a team that's roughly where we're at. This is going to be the, give me the ability to actually chat with you guys and see what has been going on. I'm going to let these run. Campaign, guys, really a grind, but you do get some decent rewards in here. It, it's not as high as I would like it to be. I would love to see a lot better, a lot higher rewards within the campaign progression. But overall, it, it is what it is. I don't think they have um, any anticipation to change really anything within the campaign in the near future that I'm seeing. So there is 701, guys. We're already at 714, so making a lot more progression in there. I've seen it never since you showed me the info to get the rank, so thank you once again. Oh, you're welcome, D2. Yeah, guys, make sure you're paying attention to those guides. It is literally um, game-changing when you look at what those guides can do and what those guides can do for you guys. It is huge. I'm waiting for an internship so I have enough to be a HIPPO member on a regular basis. Uh, that's okay, Tushir. If you guys, again, donations are always welcome, but please don't feel any obligation at all. This is what I do for fun, guys. Most of you know I, I love doing the YouTube videos, and it, it, it is for fun. You know, we're, we're Vulcan. I believe it is the primary income at this point, um, as well as other things. I, I love doing this for fun. Um, it's so cool to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, 60 Awaken. How is Frampton in the meta? No, considering we get shards for him soon. Yeah, Frampton works well. The problem with Frampton, um, random spawn, is Frampton is really, really expensive when it comes to the build. That is why a lot of players um, re really do not build Frampton maybe as much as you know a, a lot of places would, is they are very... Frampton is a hero that has to be, you know... 30960 without a doubt. It, it, it is really the, the big part. Um, Frampton in the meta formations has to be built and has to be built out a ton. Uh, again, a big, big, big build on Frampton is the only way that it works. If you have a small build or if he's not built out as more, um, Frampton will not work. Fundamentally, Frampton will not work. There we go, guys. Here's a boss sage. I'm going to let it run. I think the Dark Taylene does more damage when she resurrects. Yes, when she resurrects, she does a ton of damage, um, which is usually when she comes back and kills everybody. Um, it, it really works. At a rate of less than 1% of Elite Soul Stones, you can buy thousands of them and still not getting any. No, yeah, Shadow, it, it's very, very rare that we do get um, some of those stones in there. I just finished my Vathiel. Yeah, D2, absolutely. Vathiel is huge, guys. When you look at the buffs and the damage that he does, it, it is awesome. Does the swap scroll make one low level, one good, or does it essentially turn them into a dimensional? So Wafu, with the with the um, swap scroll, you swap a hero for a hero um, straight up. The only thing with the swap scroll is you cannot have that hero engraved, but that means that if you're swapping, um, let's say a five star Belinda with a plus 30 signature item and nine of nine furniture, it will swap to another hero with the signature item, with the furniture. It will literally swap one for one in that method, um, but it doesn't swap the engraving. If a hero has engraving, you cannot swap them. The hero fundamentally still stays the same, but like I said, you, when you swap them, um, when you swap them, it, it just swaps hero for hero. Yeah, Leo, Leo Frick. Everyone's like, who? Uh, who's who's Leo Frick? I want AFK Arena to have a landscape mode. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool to see. I, I would like to see the landscape mode in there as well. And here we're cheesing it with Baden because, again, I'm borrowing the Baden from the Greyborn account, which he is maxed out, guys. We are getting a massive, massively built Baden right there, which is awesome to see. I didn't even look to see if we had um, if we had Thorin in here, um, but I don't know. Uh, 24 times 45 left. So many emblems you could have bought from Milan, Joan, and Tamaris. What do you mean? With, with the lab tokens? Are you talking about buying the chests out of there? And look at that, guys. The awakened version of Taylene. And then, of course, Vathiel showing up in formations. And look at it. Um, Matria, guys, is right here. It is all heroes. 
Now remember, in a formation like this, and I'm not sure that there's Matria, I don't think Matria is gonna kill everybody, but in a formation like this, this is where Matria kind of um, breaks because when you look at the SP effect, every hero in here is going to be treated, as you can see, as the, um, the, the Hypogen heroes. She is going to give this five bonus, so this Hypogen bonus. Then when the battle starts, her buffs come in. So this is essentially doubled when you're running all Hypogen heroes. This is doubled when you start in here with this battle, which is pretty broken because you're doubling up the aspects of this team. Again, we know with Lucretia, guys, it is just the, the RNG factor. If I had Matria built out higher, um, she could probably work a lot better, but I like the buff that she provides in there. I would love to hear a bit about your experience getting to work with videos with Vulcan. Uh, so if you remember Shady, Vulcan and I have done videos before. We've actually done streams before. Um, I've known Vulcan since we started AFK Arena. Um, he was one of the very, very early content creators. Um, but yeah, I, I've known Vulcan. We did a, a, a video with Vulcan before in the past. We've done videos with um, Kosh Gaming, which I don't think he's covering any more um, anymore AFK Arena. And again, if, if you guys are or have seen, um, Vulcan and I also played Alluvium together. We, we were over there with a lot more of the content on the other channel. Um, a lot of the crypto we've been kind of running almost with, with the same vein of people that, that we've kind of known for a while now through Alluvium, through through a bunch of that. It, it's really cool. Um, great guy. I, I love talking to him. I love chatting with him. Um, he's just, I believe, Australia, but I think right around Sydney, maybe a little north of Sydney. But it's really, really cool to be able to work with him. I think you said that Awaken Belinda is available for the swap scroll. If that's the case, would you go Brutus or Thane? Um, Clay, I would probably go Brutus in that one. That's, I, I would honestly probably go Brutus in there because Thane, short of really the treasure scramble, um, not an incredible amount of utility um, outside of that treasure scramble. Brutus has a lot of utility. Brutus is still most of the best in slot within the Cursed Realm. Um, again, utility-wise, you're probably going to see you're probably going to see a lot more utility out of Brutus than you're going to with Thane. And I want to see where Matria was built here. See, it's a fully built out Matria. That's what I was thinking. I wanted to look at some of these formations. If not, there's Belinda. I want to see one where, if any of these, they're running Team 5 Belinda. If any of them were just running Lucretia with kind of a different formation versus having her in there. Let me try. I'm just going to drop in a hero that's just going to die. And I thought with, with a much higher built um, Matria would work a little bit better. We'll see if we can get this. Wait, it doesn't swap the engraving. No, JJP. So if you go to swap a hero that has engraving, it says this hero is not eligible to swap. That is what you see, guys. If you use um, the swap scroll, it will say you cannot swap the hero because the hero has engraving. And that is even if they have one engraving, um, you cannot swap. You, you can't swap if there's engraving on a hero, which is pretty tough. Should I swap my Taylene for Baden? Uh, again, Druskai, Drew um, it, it's tough because Taylene has such a, such a solid place within the tower. Th that, that's kind of one of um, that's kind of one of the really tough ones is if you swap that awakened version of Taylene, you're going to struggle when it comes to the Celestial Tower. Because again, she is one when you get into two teams, even single teams. Um, it, it is going to, it is going to be um, tough to make progression in there. Well, I'm screwed. Then I accidentally engraved the hell out of Thorn. Was hoping the engraving could be swapped. Yeah, the Thorn cheese. I did the same JJP. It still works um, with the swap scroll, and we don't know if there's going to be an engraving reset. Uh, we're, no, we're not talking about the upcoming. I know a little bit ago we were talking about the regular swap scroll. Um, I don't think the new one is going to be a scroll. I, I don't think it's going to be a swap scroll in the new one. I think it's going to be what they've done in the past where it's literally just, um, is just a timer. And I'm looking at these four teams. See, that's the one that I'm kind of thinking that we can run. That I believe was the same one that we were running. Oh, and I don't know where it put, or if it did even put that in here. 
It'll probably say the formation's already made, which is what I get a lot of times. But again, looking at the levels, guys, 753. See, Matria and Aziz. Again, we'll just drop Matria in here. Cancel that. We'll drop her in here and we'll see. Because even then, that wasn't a built Matria, but that'll work. Um, is still Baden or Brutus for a swap scroll? Yeah, honestly, again, wh when you look at the utility between Baden and Brutus, um, both of them have around the same utility. They're used in the treasure scramble. They're used in pretty much every single game mode. Even looking at the new game modes, um, we're seeing the exact same. They, they are both utilized within both places. Um, if you swap for Brutus, if you swap for Baden, Again, vice versa, you're you're still gonna make a lot of progression within the towers. Both of them are required. See which one you can merc, and that's the way that I played it, Hop It, is um whatever one I could merc, I got the other one. And and that was really the way that I did it, is making sure that I had one of the two. Was the fourth anniversary video the first time you did something directly with Lilith? Yes, it is. It is shady. That was the first one that we did in conjunction with both of us and Lilith. Um, it, it was really cool. Again, working with them um, is is always fun as well. Uh, you actually need to engrave the entire Thorn and his opportunistic helpers to get around the campaign. Yeah, the, the power cap, it gets to a point where it, it is kind of tough with Thorin. Um, again, the engraving reset, it, it depends um, what you can do. Now, that's the other question that I have, Peter, um, is, and again, we. I don't know all the details of this. That, that's why I'm um, re really talking about it a lot. I don't know if, so we've seen the Awakened chest that they're giving us. So they are giving us a free Awakened hero, which is awesome to see. With that being said, you cannot exchange for the Awakened version of Belinda or the Awakened version of Matria. Um, both of those are unavailable to pick up from that chest. It is the core Six heroes from the first year of AFK Arena, which I don't know if they have this exchange, if you're going to be able to swap for Matria or if you're going to be able to swap for Belinda. Again, that that we're, we're still going to have to wait and see what that looks like and if we can do it. Again, only time will tell with that is, is if you can swap into the new one. What's going on, Neil? And Woolen is here as well. Uh, I'm not saying you don't need to engrave him, but I'm just saying RNG-wise. Yeah, you'll just get a lot more attempts. That's the big thing, D2, um, is a lot more attempts. Um, That's different. That's different, Clay. That's different than the original one. Yeah, that, that's what we've seen, Coulter, was the swap that we've seen. Um, the, the notes are up on the Chinese server that they kind of translated, put it over on Reddit. That's where it's kind of coming from. 309 above. Yeah, I know, Javid. That's one of my um, my big pet peeves is we're getting to the point where it seems like the E30, the E60, the 309 is required on every single hero, even baseline to work, um, it is what we're starting to see a lot more of is, again, a, a lot more bigger builds on a lot of other heroes, which require us to get a lot more resources, of course. Um, the newest Wilder, the Jungler, uh, Tamaris, I see you have yours, E60. Is he really worth building that far out? So the big thing is building him out, um, he's used as a buffer. So a lot of players are not using Tamaris as a kind of fundamentally like Vathil. Um, He is used as crowd control, but he is also a buffer with, I believe, the 9 of 9 furniture. So he's finding a lot of utility, and he's also finding a lot of utility in the treasure scramble as well. Um, again, providing the crowd control with his enthusiasm, but also buffing up the team is the reason why a lot of players have built him up. Um, yeah, we can take a look at him for a minute because he's a hero again. Not many players build or, or they just kind of overlook when you look at Tamaris. Um, I'm still building him. Oh, I already used him. I used him in a different formation. We can't, we can see him. So overall, guys, this enthusiasm is what really makes a big difference on him. Um, immediately receive stacks at the at the start of battle. Now, of course, the furniture on him is huge, but the engraving on him I like as well because of this. So, so we'll actually get this. Um, this allows the crowd control. So when you put Tamaris alone, 
He doesn't work incredibly well, but when you put him in conjunction with a couple other heroes, including anyone who brings them together like Kinesa and Rook, um, he does incredibly well in the formation because fundamentally everyone is put together and it makes it, it's really, really hard to get out of his abilities or get out of all of the enemy's abilities, which again is, is pretty tough. Uh, what time is it in my place? It is 1.54 p.m. So it is just the afternoon, guys, almost two o'clock in the afternoon. I despise Thorin. Yes, the Thorin cheese, guys, for majority of players, it is a love-hate relationship with the Thorin cheese, and a lot of people do not like it at all. Um, what do I think about Awakened Thane for Awakened Solus? Honestly, my personal opinion, that would be a swap that I would do. Because again, when you look at where the heroes are being utilized, um, Awakened Thane is being utilized not really very much within the Cursed Realm, but we're seeing him a ton within the Treasure Scramble. Solus is everywhere. The Awakened version of Solus is literally utilized everywhere. Um, I, I would definitely like to see... Um, I, I, I like the Awakened version of Solus. I, I think it's a huge, huge hero. Uh, huge hero. What do you think is the next big forward to AFK new graphics, mechanics, modes, um, heroes, others to keep its players? Um, honestly, I, I would like to see for AFK Arena Apollinaire, I, I feel like they could do, again, a lot more with the guild bosses and looking at some other games, playing some other games. I feel like the guild aspect, again, is something that AFK Arena, and I've said this before, is really missing. I, I feel like, you know, the, the getting players to play together, um, getting guilds, the, the guild functionality has to be there, guys. There has to be um, something behind it, whether being in a larger guild, you know, they have something like the Abyssal Expedition where you can possibly buff up, let's say, resource production, um, even if it did like something like guild kind of um, Isle of Gold aspect. I, I think the mechanics of getting players together and getting players fundamentally to play together will bring more players into the game. Um, again, to, to kind of really keep it together. Right now, everything they've been doing, including the new Nightmare Corridor, is kind of a one-off you do by yourself. And, and that's one thing I don't really like, Apollinaire, is a majority of AFK Arena, when you look at it big picture, campaign, all of the, the even within the guild stuff, the Cursed Realm, the Twisted Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, even when you look at, you know, your Fantastic Beasts, when you look at any of the voyages, everything's solo. Short of the Abyssal Expedition in the Hunting Fields, everything else is solo. Um, and again, as much as we chat and we talk a lot, you know, over on Discord, with the Guild, everything of that nature, almost everything that we have in AFK Arena is, is kind of solo. There isn't really the, the big, um, you know, benefit to playing together with other people, being in larger guilds, um, things of that nature that I would like to see. I, I think it would be really cool to see, again, a lot of that kind of getting th those heroes together. Where I'm going to go because it's bed. Uh, it's 2 a.m. Have a good night, Peter. Um, what do you think? I know he makes big formations, useless Greyborn Tower now, not to mention King's Tower. Yeah, not Thorin not used, I mean, short of the campaign. But again, Thorin is slowly getting replaced in here. Um, even if you look at any of the newer teams, most of them do not have Thorin. It, it is really, um, Thorin is not very prevalent in a lot of it anymore. Um, but we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, any news on Caresso? So the new Mauler is coming on Tuesday. Um, honestly, the, the new Mauler is showing a lot of promise. Um, with him being a Mauler specifically, absolutely. I, I would build the new Mauler again just because of the Mauler Tower. I would absolutely... Um, absolutely make sure that you build the new Mauler, guys. Again, in a lot of formations, especially because he seems to have a lot of synergy with Anasa, with Antandra, with Brutus, with Salakai, with a lot of the heroes in the same Mauler vein. It seems like he's providing a lot of utility in there, which is awesome. It, it is really, really cool to see that they have a Mauler hero that has utility. Um, I, I definitely like it. Do you think there's a chase they'll buff Awakened Disease? No. 
So Petty King, what AFK Arena has says, said before, um, once a hero is released, within probably the first week or two is where you would see adjustments like we've seen with Belinda, um, like we've seen with uh, Sophia, or not Sophia, um, Sonia. Um, if there's fundamentally something wrong with the, with the hero, they will adjust the hero. With Awakened Disease being out almost a full year, they're, they're not going to change it. I, I would be absolutely floored if they did change it, um, but they will not. Um, wouldn't put in granite in plus 30 signature and mid freeze, Isabella. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can swap this. I'm not even... Um, I, I get caught up, Woolen, um, in talking to you guys. I don't even pay half attention to this um, just for the simple fact that I, I want to spend some time with you guys. I love chatting and talking to you guys. Putting another hero in here would probably be absolutely beneficial. Again, I, I'm paying very little to no attention to what is going on in here, but it would probably definitely work. We, we can run it for a while. Again, I, I hadn't really played mu much attention to it. Well, what's going on, Winnie? I did play a uh, top 10 poll when I went from one copy of Z's going from one Solus. Yeah, getting them is the, the Temple of Time um, that's expensive, Raphael, to, to get a copy of all of those. Um, I know it works, but again, it is pretty, um, it is pretty expensive. What's going on, Renee? Is Matria meta? It seems yes. Matria is definitely making a very strong push to the meta formations, guys. Um, just because she is strong. I mean, she comes back alive. It seems like a lot of the meta formations she is definitely making there. Uh, how am I doing? Oh, doing great, Raphael. Thank you. I got some more shopping to do. I believe my kids and my wife are at the store right now um, do, doing some more shopping. I'm hoping we can get through this one. Again, when it gets to a point, guys, if Lucretia loses her buffs, um, it's pretty much just a slow burn to game over for her. So you built Matria, not Baden. Yes, I did, Rain. And the big thing is, if you haven't checked it out, um... It seems like we're getting an Awakened swap scroll again over on Reddit. The information is over there. So I could swap my Awakened version of Aziz um, for the Awakened version of Baden, which again is going to be a game changer if that is how it works. Um, I would absolutely love it. What is the ideal Awakened Belinda comp? Um, Mickey, the, the big Awakened Belinda comp is running, um, which I think she might have got buffed in this one. I'm not sure if Mortis buffed her in this one. Um, but Belinda is really big when you look at Rosaline running with her, Palmer, Rowan, um, pretty much anything. And a lot of players are running the Awakened version of Belinda with um, Ulna. So Ulna will actually provide the Awakened version of Belinda the immunity. But with Belinda taking damage, she can ult super, super fast because that Awakened version of Belinda um, is taking a lot of damage but has the immunity. It, it works um, it works pretty well. I don't know if this one we're going to be able to get down. I might have to play around with it a little bit more to, to actually get this one down. Imagine you had a chance to reset the campaign or King's Tower and Faction Towers. Oh, yeah, that would be insane if I could reset my camp, my um Faction Towers and then go ahead and farm those. Wouldn't it be better to place Lucretia in the front? Oh, definitely Kiss. Yeah, we can swap it out. Like I said, I'm... Um, this one, I, I'm not paying a ton of attention to. Now, she does get buffs out of the back, but yeah, she, she is fully built here. But again, we have to get the heroes to essentially die. If she gets stuck on the wrong target, that's kind of part of the problem, is if she's stuck there. Matria against six awakened heroes in the portrait. So yeah, she's so strong. And I love the new, I love the portrait of her. I, I cannot wait to build her out a little bit higher um, and ultimately get her built out. So Frampton just goes down. So there we go. We might be able to get it down if the immunity ever ends, guys. This might be it. Let's exit on this one. There it is. Thank you, Kiss. We just had to swap her to the front. Again, I, I'm, I'm paying very little attention um, to the campaign, but let's look at it here. Boom. First team. Look at Mulan. Now, I almost have Mulan up to a plus 60 engraving. I believe she's at a 52, 53 right now. Um, Mulan, again, is making a really, really big presence in tons of AFK Arena. 
um, including the Treasure Scramble, Curse Realm comps, she's there as well. Love to see her and putting out a lot of damage. Even here, guys, 162 billion. Insane with the amount of damage Belinda puts out. Baden, again, a big reason, 45 billion on that one. Then, of course, Thane putting in 51. Not quite as much, but getting buffs up there from Vathiel. And then, of course, Lucretia still putting out 106 billion damage in there to complete another boss stage, which is awesome, guys. You can see it is a long, long journey getting through here to get my 250 diamonds. Um, unfortunately, the, the campaign progression is very, very slow at this point. Get a tier three chest or tier three piece. I will definitely take that, guys as we continue to make our progression in here, which is awesome. I'm sorry I don't understand the language I wrote through the translator. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, uh, the awakened disease against, where to put the, oh, yeah, that's okay. I, I understand if you don't know, don't have the English. I would have been better. Uh, I agree for me, I think next thing is mixed heroes like half wild. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I, I don't know. How I, I like the idea. So if you could have, I mean, you'd almost have like offshoot factor factions, a um, with with kind of a blend between them. I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, you know, four years in, and I, I think about this as well, guys. Four years into AFK Arena, um, for a mobile game to at, to last four years. When you look at Raid, when you look at a lot of the other games. Four years is a long time. Four years is, is a very, very significant amount of time um, for a mobile game to still be here. So, so it's kind of crazy to see four years that it is still here, guys. All right, we're almost done, but let me go ahead. I'm gonna hop over and we can do, um, I'm, I'm gonna do the viewer giveaway. We do this every single time, guys. I, I love going through here and actually being able to give some membership back to the viewers that are in here. So let me go ahead and do this up really quick with our membership so we'll do the gifting membership it goes out randomly to players that are in the stream and i, I try not to forget this every time guys but there we go so it is going to take a minute those are going to pop up um who should i take to plus s30 next mulan yeah mulan requires it shady so so that's one of the big things if when you look at both of those um, Mulan is one that really does require the plus 30 signature item, which is huge right here. Carrying control effects, which is kind of crazy. Um, Yennefer, the plus 20 is really what she needs. Um, the plus 30 is situational. Th that's kind of the problem that I have with the plus 30 with Yennefer. Um, it is a situational buff that she gives. If nobody is in this magic barrier, it's not going to do anything. Um, again, depending on the formation, but Mulan absolutely all right so we got yoshi petty Raphael, apollinaire and woolen congratulations on the the memberships to the channel i love doing that again it is a really really cool way that i can actually give back to you guys um through the membership it is awesome to see we're going to continue progression on here guys again we're going to wait and see with all of our heroes um but waiting to see exactly what comes up i've been farming stargazer cards as you can see um, as well as sitting on a lot of diamonds. I want to wait to see who the next, next um, Celestial or Hypogen hero is. That way, when they get dropped, we have the ability to just build them out significantly or even build them out in their entirety, depending on the utility, like we've seen with Ogath. Um, Ogath, there was not a big reason to really build them out. That's why I passed on him, um, which is good because it gave us the ability to actually save some of our resources in the AFK arena versus having another hero that we just do have to build out at that point. I've been watching your videos quite a bit in the early game. If you get an awakened alt, do you use him to max out and forget everyone else? Um, Blinky Shady, um, from the beginning, use Damon. Damon, early game. Um, the awakened heroes will definitely support depending on the one that you pull, just because fundamentally early game, you're gonna get them at legendary. That that's really the big thing is if you pull an early copy, chances of you having a full legendary team early game is going to be pretty much nil to none. So if you get one out, I, I wouldn't focus on really maxing them out because you'll quickly see that a hero like Damon will eclipse the awakened hero pretty quick with the survivability, fundamentally how he works. Um, as the enemy gets stronger, um, Damon actually gets stronger. 
which is again the the reason um why this works um Damon again the awakened heroes in there will work fundamentally if you get an awakened disease crowd control if you get awakened solace you have a support hero um but fundamentally again build out Damon early game it'll be your carry for an incredible amount of time you will carry with Damon over and over and over and he still does have a lot of utility in the game today we're seeing him still within the curse realm we're seeing him within campaign formations within the Greyborn tower absolutely still again it carries a ton of utility within afk arena so right guys so that'll do it for our sunday stream thank you guys for joining me i absolutely love being able to do this every week guys sitting down with you guys we have a ton that is coming up with the patch on tuesday i'm gonna have a lot of videos especially the best in slot teams when it comes to um, a bunch of the new content that is going to be dropping on Tuesday, as well as the fourth anniversary, guys. I believe we have two more days on the test server, and then we're going to start seeing all of the fourth anniversary kickoff, which again is going to be absolutely incredible. Solus or Belinda? I would still go with Solus. Even then, David, if you get one copy of a legendary Awaken Belinda, um, the damage is still there. You, you will still do incredibly well with one single version of the Awakened version of Belinda because of the burn ability that she has. So it is really, really cool. But again, guys, we have a ton that is still coming down the pipeline um, to really focus on and build as AFK Arena does hit that big four-year anniversary. All right, guys, again, thank you guys for joining me for the stream. Um, and as always, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>